try to train the mind because it's the source of all our real problems. We tend to think that our problems come from outside. But it's the way the mind deals with those outside issues. That's the real problem. It's always looking for trouble. Lust comes and it looks for something to feel lustful about. Anger comes and goes looking for things to be angry about. And it's not that the world doesn't provide these things. They're there. But it's what we do with them that creates turns them into issues. And so we have to turn our attention inward to look at where the source of these issues comes from. Our immediate reaction, of course, is always to focus on the things outside, and that's the very first step, is turning your attention around and looking at, just looking at the state of the mind that goes flowing out to those objects. For example, when lust comes, you have to Learn how to let go of the object you're focused on and turn around and look at the lust. When anger comes, okay, let go of the object of your anger, turn around and look at the fact of anger in the mind, what it's like to be angry. The same goes for other emotions. Fear, shame, anxiety. You have to turn around and just look at the the event in the mind in and of itself. And for most of us, that's quite an accomplishment right there. One of the techniques is to focus on the, the aspects of the object that don't go in, li in line with the emotion you're feeling. For example, with lust, this is why we have that contemplation of the 32 parts of the body. Our attachment goes to the body goes really, really deep. Even for people who feel they don't feel much lust in any way, there's still a very strong attachment to the body. It goes right into the bone, and it's amazing how deep it is. So we constantly have to keep hammering away at this issue. Look at the aspects of the body that aren't worth holding on to, that aren't worth getting attached to, over and over and over again. Because it's not, it's not our normal habit. And the purpose of this is to focus your attention away from the object to turn around and look at the mind. Well, why does it feel lust? Why does it feel attachment for this? Thing that doesn't really deserve lust, or really deserve attachment. The same goes with anger. Try to feel compassion for yourself, compassion for the other person compassion for the situation so you can let go of the object and turn around and look at the state in the mind, in and of itself. What is it like to be angry? Same holds for fear. There's a great story they tell about John Cow in the Northeast. He was staying in a cave one night, and he had staying there for several days. He had no idea that there was a tiger who lived deeper into the cave. Until one night it was a full Moon night, he was out doing walking meditation in front of the cave, and the tiger came along to go in the cave. And immediately he felt fear that just filled his whole body. But he was quick enough to turn his attention away from the tiger and onto the fear, realizing the tiger wasn't the real danger. The real danger was the fear itself, what he might do under the power of that fear. And his concentration was strong enough so he could focus on the feeling of the fear until the, fact, until the point where the feeling of fear dropped away. He dropped in a very deep, deep state of concentration, standing there in front of the tiger. When he came out of that concentration, the mood had moved quite a ways. So he realized he'd been in that concentration for several hours. The tiger was gone. He learned several important lessons. One, the ability to drop the object and look at the fact of the emotion in the mind, and then secondly realize that the emotion and the awareness were two separate things. All too often the emotion colors our awareness. It's like dye that goes into the water. It seeps throughout the water. And if we're really attentive, we can see that the 
fact of the awareness and the emotion are two separate things. There's a very natural dividing line between the two. When you catch sight of that, that moves you on to the second stage in the practice. Having that sense of separateness, you really can observe the emotion, not identify with it. When you observe it, then you can start looking into, well, where does it come from? What is it flowing out of? What flows out of ignorance? Well, turn your attention on to that ignorance. Exactly what are you consciously ignoring? We tend to think of ignorance as just something that happens to be there in the mind, but there's an active activity of ignoring, an active activity of denying, of shutting things off within the mind. What are we covering up? For most of us, that's how our minds function. There's a lot that we cover up from ourselves. And in the course of doing that, we just create more problems. The mind may feel that it can live with itself more easily, but that's not really the case, because deep down inside you know that there's a dishonesty, there's a, there's a split. And then a desire to maintain that, those delusions. That's what keeps us divided from ourselves, and that's what keeps all the important things in the mind under wraps behind the curtains. The purpose of the meditation, the purpose of training the mind, is to kind of open up those curtains to look inside. And you may or may not like what you find when you look inside, but at least it's better to see it. Better bring it out into the open for yourself. Because that way there are fewer and fewer things that can take over the mind sort of out of nowhere. For many people, when anger comes, it seems to come out of nowhere. When fear comes, when any of these emotions comes, they seem to suddenly appear full-blown. But when you can start getting the mind more and more still so that it can see more clearly through these curtains, through these screens that it puts up within itself, then you realize that there are certain stages in how these, these emotions arise. There's a whole series of agreements. The mind agrees with itself, okay, this is going to be this, and that's going to be that, and I'm going to hold on to this, and I'm going to think that and turn this little stirring in the mind into this or that idea, this or that emotion. A whole string of agreements that goes on behind the curtains. It's like politics. Most of the decisions are made behind closed doors. Most of the agreements are made behind closed doors. What happens outside is just for show. Many times what the mind does is just for show. For it, who is it showing itself? Well, it's showing to itself. It doesn't have to show anybody else. A lot of the ways it justifies its emotions is based on well, what it would say if somebody asked him, asked you about it. Someone said, why did you feel anger then? Well, you have to give a reason that's socially acceptable. As for the other reasons, you hide those behind the curtains. And it's not just hiding them from other people, you hide them from yourself. And the bigger the range of ignorance in your own mind, the more these things are likely to come out and cause lots of problems. So there are many stages in dealing with emotions like this. One is just to get off the object and onto the actual emotion in and of itself. Secondly is to realize that the emotion is one thing, your awareness of the emotion is something else. And they get the mind as really still as possible so you can catch these emotions as they begin, before the curtains come down to hide all the, the dressing up and the, the fabrication that goes on before they come full-blown. This is why practice of, the practice of concentration is so important. You know why it's an important stage in the concentration? Just not to play along with anything that comes along. Learn how to disband things, because the more quickly you can disband them, the closer and closer you get to their actual beginnings. The point where there's a little stirring in the mind and then a label comes on and says, this is this and that's that, and creates whatever issues you want to out of that little stirring. So that when, the, when the time comes to actually watch these as they develop, you're less and less likely to get taken in 
you're less and less likely to participate in what's going on. So you really can have that sense of separate awareness. It really does watch things as they happen. So this practice of concentration is not just a nice, comfortable place to stay for periodic times in the day. It's the basic skill you need if you're going to see anything in the mind, if you're going to gain any real training in the mind, make a real difference in how the mind functions, make a real difference in how things are organized, how things are administered in the mind. So even though it sometimes may seem dumb just to keep coming back to the breath, coming back to the breath, it's a basic skill. Without this, you can't really see anything. All you have are ideas you picked up from books, you picked up from other people. And then you try to sketch in the, the blank spaces. But it's all guesswork. And where does guesswork come from? Well, from the same ignorance that you're trying to overcome. Got to turn around and do things in a new way. Realize that important changes have to be made here. But if you do the practice, you'll have the tools that you need.